Welcome fellow, fellow travelers to Good Times RV. Today I'm going to review the uh, liquid spring rear suspension I installed about 20,000 miles ago. Over the last couple of years I put 20,000 miles on the suspension and I just wanted to go over it and you know, does it make sense? Did it make sense for me? Is it worth a lot of money uh, to make this kind of adjustment to the Ford F53 chassis? For those that are not familiar with uh, with the liquid spring suspension, I've done a video on it, which I have down in the uh, show notes. But here's basically what it does. It, does, it replaces your uh, rear suspension with a system that is driven by viscous fluid. It actually is hooked into the computer of the vehicle, so it adjusts dynamically for your driving. Uh, it, it's a very comfortable system, but as you can see, it's complex and consequently pretty expensive. But now let's get on with the review. To put my 20,000 mile in context, I want to sh share with you some of the places we've been with this suspension. Uh, just a collage of spots. We have literally been from the Canadian border to the tip of Florida and from Florida to, of course, California. A little collage. This collage of pictures, you'll note that the, the rear suspension has been completely deflated, if you will, uh, so that the coach will lay level. Uh, in almost all of these pictures, the sights do pitch forward slightly. So what I do is I reduce the rear suspension to its lowest position, you know it has three, uh, and allows me to level the coach while keeping the front wheels on the ground. Also, note that I've gone, uh, that I've traveled through any number of different environments from high altitude hot to low altitude hot, uh, high plains, uh, narrow roads with soft shoulders, with high winds. Uh, here again, lowered the rear suspension so that I can keep those front wheels on the ground. Uh, it's just, uh, it makes for a much more comfortable camping. And here we're uh, boondocking at the north rim of the canyon. Again, lowered the rear suspension so I can keep those front wheels on the ground because the ground put, pitched away. Uh, here we're at 8,000 feet uh, and actually we got snow. Uh, and I'll show you a picture of that. Here we are at the north rim of the canyon and actually uh, certainly on your bucket list. Fabulous place. It snowed on us when we were there. It got really cold and snowed on us. Uh, from, had to go out and shovel snow, if you will, off the off the trailer. And here we are again, a very narrow road. This one was a high speed road, uh, soft shoulders or, or no shoulder, uh, and it was about eight and a half foot lane. Here we are at 190 feet below sea level at 100 plus degrees Fahrenheit, uh, Furnace Creek Death Valley. Uh, we were in a overflow overflow parking lot. Again, lowered the rear suspension so the coach would sit flat. Here we took a two-lane road into California and, and ended up in LA traffic on, on I-10. And a good friend of ours has a house just north of LA, so we parked on the street outside their home. So we used the uh, spring, the liquid spring, to level the coach. We were at a very uh, uphill angle, so we raised the back of the coach. And here we are, one of my bucket list items, to camp on the Pacific Ocean you know, at Emma Wood State Park in Ventura and uh, the sunsets were just fantastic but really was fun so let's get into the details here here is where the control box for the liquid spring is mounted in our coach this is what it looks like you can adjust the ride uh, between sport normal and comfort uh, as well as the height the high normal or low and in those pictures I was setting it at low except when I was on the hill in, in California and I set that on high uh, but let's get some measurements I always am kind of curious as to exactly how high and how low it not only uh, moves 
the fender over the wheel, but more importantly, uh, how, how far it moves the hitch in the back, because I do raise the rear of the coach when I'm departing a steep curb or steep angle to keep from dragging my hitch. Now you'll note with the uh, position on high, the wheel, is, wheel arch is considerably higher than the tire, but the um, lift lays flat, so there is enough room for that lift to lay flat on the pavement, which to me is important. So in the highest position, we're right about 43 and a half to the fender edge there. And now uh, let's go around to the uh, hitch, and we'll see here that the hitch is elevated to about 24 and a half inches. And you'll notice overall that the coach is, is quite high in the back with it set at the highest level. So let's reduce it to the ride level here. Uh, we'll just indicate the, on the right you press the arrow down arrow once. It'll go from the high to the, to the normal or driving level and we'll see what that measures at. So here we are. This is ride level and it's oh, approximately 40 and 3 quarters, thereabouts. And now at the hitch and the ride level, we're at about 19 and a half inches. So now let's reduce it to the lowest level. Uh, this is uh, where I typically camp at, as I lower it down here. And you'll see it, it reduces the uh, fender height to approximately 37 and you know three quarters, five eighths, well three quarters. Let's call it three quarters. 37 and three quarters. Uh, so, and while we, don't, it's not a tremendous amount, um, it does make a significant difference, surprisingly. So, and let's get around here to the back, uh, and let's see what the hitch is. Where the hitch is? Uh, it looks, it looks very low, um, and if we look here closely. It's oh, um, maybe 15 inches, 14 and three quarters, um, thereabouts. So, uh, let's take a closer look here. Yeah, it looks like it's 15, uh, 14 and three quarters, 14 and three quarters inches. So that's pretty low. And, and you'll also know that the, that rear, to, rear uh, mud guard is right on the ground. Kind of a reminder that you haven't lifted the suspension if you try to pull away like this. Though this suspension will, once you read approximately 15 miles an hour, uh, it'll automatically go to ride height. So you won't be driving around on your bump stops. Now, the, the real takeaway here is you have about three inches of uh, adjustment uh, from ride height, either high, three inches up, or three inches low. And actually, while that may not sound like much, it is a substantial amount. And the hitch uh, can be increased to five inches up or five inches low. And that's particularly useful if you're slowly coming off a ramp apron or pulling into a space with a, with a pitch up. You can raise that rear, get that hitch off the ground uh, so it doesn't scrape uh, in any event. I find the feature very useful, especially for camping. Uh, and this is on top of the ride attributes that uh, make, make the ride much more comfortable and, in my opinion, much safer. It, it is a wonderful system. Uh, we've experienced it over the last two years, about 20,000 miles. And as you've seen from the collage, in any number of different environments. And so far, it has not given us any issues. Okay, so I'm glad that uh, I got a chance to do that. I was not surprised by the numbers, but it's just nice to know to have those numbers in your head. So that's my quick review. Uh, was it worth the money? Yes. In my opinion, yes. Not only does it make the coach safer to drive, but it takes a little bit of that pressure off of you driving, especially at the end of the day, because that's typically when I'm on a secondary road, trying to find a campground, push it along. Sometimes it's been a long day uh, and it's just, it's nice. Plus, now you've seen how you can raise and lower that. When you get into your, your camp spot, if it happens to be pitched down, 
instead of risk lifting your front wheels off the ground to get level, I can lower the back. And then I only have to lift the front a little bit. Typically, I keep the, ground, the front tires on the ground. But I hope you found that useful. Uh, again, was it worth it? To me, it was. Uh, it's a good addition. And apparently, this, this idea was not lost on Newmar because the 2021 Canyon Stars have an air rear suspension. Uh, it, I thought that was quite interesting. I knew that they were looking at uh, different types of suspensions. But they're now on a Freightliner chassis with air, air suspension and air brakes. Really, can't hear stories are really stepping up. So, have a great day. Thumbs up. See you on the road.